Optocoupler Input Output Circuits for PLCs by Lewis Laughlin. Please visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. Well, what I'm going to present is based on circuits that are used with PLCs. These ideas can be easily used with, say, an Arduino, a microchip PIC, or a Raspberry Pi. There's a lot of advantages to optocoupler input-output circuits. So let's do some basic reviews and then we're going to observe how things connect to programmable logic controllers and how this would pertain to your Arduino or other project to assure more reliable operation. All right. This is a typical 6-pin optocoupler. It consists of a photo emitter and an NPN photo transistor. Optocouplers come in a number of types. All seem to share in common an infrared LED photo emitter. But the differences end there. For example, the phototransistor types can be used for input or output circuits. As were you, if you have photo SCR or photo triac, those are almost always used exclusively for output circuits. So our main focus here is going to be the transistor photo um, couplers. Here's your basic. Uh, illustration. You energize the LED. Light falls upon the base of a NPN phototransistor and it switches on. In the case here you have some kind of pull-up resistor and the output goes low when the LED is turned on. This is mostly how it's used internally in PLCs and I would argue it can be used just as easily with an Arduino circuit. Just a little basics on phototransistors. It's their NPN and what it is, the base area is a little bit, unlike a conventional transistor, you have a larger base area which is P-type material for the light to fall on. When light falls on the uh, base, it generates a small base emitter current which is multiplied by beta to give us a larger collector to emitter current. Down here we'll show you for example as your light increases your current IC in milliamps will increase. What you want to do when you're switching these on and off, you're not using this as an audio amplifier, you want it switched on and you want it switched on fully. So fully turn on your emitter. Your emitter in most cases is an LED. Um, most everybody that I know of uses infrared emitters. There's different voltages and different current configurations for LEDs. As you can see here, they're assuming maybe at 20 milliamps you've got 1.2 volts or so on an infrared emitter as where you can go as high as almost 4 volts for a white LED. So assume on your infrared emitters um, 1.2 to 1.7 volts when you design these circuits. Otherwise, it operates like any other LED circuit. All right, you could even make your own optocoupler if you wanted to do this. You just take a regular LED. You take a, one of these type photo transistors, place them together, and use some black electrical tape to keep the light out. Hey, I've made these. They work in a pinch, um, but manufactured optocouplers are so cheap it makes no sense to do this but you can do it if you just want to try it now we come to a discussion of a PLC also known as a programmable logic controller 
let's look at it this way. The PLC has a microprocessor, a cousin to an Arduino or PIC or whatever, that has its own power supply. But what you have is called an isolation barrier, and that, and that electrical isolation barrier is performed by optocouplers. It's electrically isolated on the input, it's electrically isolated on the output. That way switching noise, surges, and other real world things that can mess up microcontrollers cannot reach the microprocessor. That's how these become extra reliable and you're not having to go over and hit the reset switch and start it all over once in a while. This also enables us to use higher voltage switches, higher voltage relays and output devices and sensors. Your most common voltages used in PLC sensors and output devices is 24 volts and 120 volts. You're not going to apply either one of those directly to a processor. This is a basic block diagram of your input circuits to a PLC or or whatever microcontroller you're using. If you're using an AC input, you're going to need some kind of bridge rectifier to change it to DC. You're going to need something to clean up the noise and rack it and filter it a little bit. Some kind of threshold detector. Then the optical isolation itself. And then it comes to the PLC microcontroller. Note that in all cases on the left side of the opto isolation the power must come from the field it's not getting it should not get its power from the PLC microcontroller it should have its own power supply this is the H11AA1 optocoupler it's pretty much like other optocouplers with an NPN phototransistor output but notice a difference here. We have two back-to-back -back photo emitters. This is very handy because it eliminates the problem of polarity. So I can hook plus or minus, doesn't matter as long as I have my dropping resistors and input circuits. It doesn't matter in the least what the polarity of the device that I connect it to is set at. This is an illustration taken directly from a PLC service manual and illustrates what we have to call source and sync. This, this determines how the sensors are connected in these and also the outputs for two for that matter. We're looking at it from the viewpoint of a current loop. If we have a current flow through the optocoupler back through the switch to the return on your power source. In this case this is the sinking output because your current loop has to be completed on the negative side of the source. Once it's uh, switched on the LED does its thing turning on the phototransistor and telling the microcontroller, hey, the switch is closed. This is the sync configuration. Let's look at the source configuration. Your current loop is usually completed through the sensor. In this case, the sensor will switch on. It supplies my... Um, it connects the positive side of the circuit, which again goes through the PLC's optocoupler and associated circuits back to ground. But because I'm using these back-to-back -back LED emitters, I'm not really worried about polarity. It doesn't care which way the source current is going to move. Um, it just cares that it's there. So this is a sourcing input. You're your positive side of your circuit is going to come through the sensor to the optocoupler and return to ground. Here's another illustration of how the two sensors are different. 
you have can, you can have an NPN transistor based sensor or a PNP transistor based sensor and the NPN transistor based sensors will use a syncing input that is the positive will go to the PLC and then it's um, switched on to ground through the sensor or in the source output the positive side of the supply is connected to the sensor the sensor switches on it sources the current through the PLC and back to ground that's their difference in source and sync and this is important to understand based on the type of sensors you're using now if it's just plain mechanical switches uh, it doesn't matter if you use source or sync uh, but if you're dealing with solid-state sensors such as Hall devices, yes, you do have to worry about these issues. This is an illustration of the output on a typical optocoupler. I think this was a Micrologix 1000 that has a six relay output. Well, yeah, you do get your voltage isolation through the relays but relays are expensive and they don't switch on and off very fast but this illustrates what we would be do dealing with if you had a PLC if you look at connection C2 you notice or common number two you notice that it goes that one side of the two relays is connected to a common and then the other side of the relays have their own individual connections in this case Y2 Y3 and so I could have my own separate power supply they usually have a fuse and have two separate loads so this side of the PLC could be switching for instance 220 volt AC circuits while over here the other four relays which are tied comp one side of each relay of the four relays are tied into a common called C4 and then they have four individual load connections Y4 through Y7 they have their own fuse this circuit over here could be a 110 volt circuit or it could be a 24 volt DC circuit this is why these things are done in this manner to give you maximum flexibility that's why you can have hundreds of circuit configurations with a single PLC let's look a little closer at solid state output circuits here we have an optocoupler with a phototransistor that's used to switch on a higher power transistor and here's your output connections now your output here does have a polarity the ground always has to go towards negative and the collector always has to go positive let's look at this once again from the viewpoint of a 24 volt DC source the negative of course is connected to the ground the positive is connected to the output load device and when the optocoupler is switched on the current flow back through the power transistor will complete the circuits because this is because the switch is in the low side or negative side of the circuit we call this sinking also observe that if you have a load that has a polarity observe the polarity on the load observe the polarity on the PLC output if using this type of output configuration you can build very similar circuits I've had them all over my website again we have the same output circuit I didn't misspell that the manual did in this case the load is uh, connected in the negative side of course the negative side of the circuit still has to go to the emitter side of the transistor and the positive connects directly to the collector of the power transistor optocoupler assembly when it switches on we're going to source the current through the transistors to the device so again 
this is why you have to understand you can place this load either in the sourcing configuration or the sinking configuration works either way depends on the design of the device and how you want to place it and you still need if it's a DC device you still need to observe the polarities of both the output circuit and the load itself now this isn't so important if it's an AC load and this is a triac internal triac circuit but if you're dealing with DC devices and 24 volts in industry is very common you have to think in this term you can make use of this if you want to adopt some of this industrial switching devices to your Arduino or other home built designs all right seen this before it's a typical solid state relay this could some this could be an example of a load device for example we would use the PLC or your Arduino or whatever this would be the input circuit it has polarity protection and it has a voltage range of 5 to 30 volts so that means this would work on a 24 volt DC source as illustrated here and here just observe your polarity again of course I'm going to use this load you can use this load this is the load here that the PLC or the Arduino or whatever you got may be seeing and this may switch on something that's really a heavy load maybe this switches on a blower fan which you which uses several amps this is done all the time the load can often be another relay a heavier load relay or switching device this in, ca in the case of this this is just an AC relay for doing lights so you can go from a DC output to switching an AC switching assembly to operate AC equipment you can also have loads such as this DC relay which we discussed in other videos again it has an input from 3.5 to 32 volts so it would work in our 24 volt circuit but you're talking about being able to switch 7 to 40 amps DC uh, that's a heavy duty DC motor isn't it of course you have to observe the polarity on the output have to observe the polarity on the input so that's just a basic primer on PLC inputs and outputs these really apply for your Arduino and other circuits as well I hope you found this video useful uh, visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com